with a challenge today and that's great because for the next few weeks we're going to be looking through a series in the bible that's all about the challenges that the disciples faced so to start off we're going to play a game we're going to play a challenge game and this is called what's in the box so we're going to take it in turns to put stuff that we don't know inside the box and we have to feel it and guess what it is now i've picked some Pretty gross things. Have you picked some pretty gross things? Yes. <laughs> so it should be some fun. So let's see how we go. Okay, so I am first up. And here is the first object. I have no idea what it is. You see it? All right. Here we go. Right. Hands going in. How gross have you gone? Gross. You would hate it. I don't want to touch it. Put it in. Put it. Touch it. Ew. What is that? <laughs> Ew, it's like an animal. <laughs> is it slime? <laughs> yes, it is. Ah, it is that slime. Don't like slime. That's so <laughs> gross. No slime. Ah, okay. Okay, I think it's your turn. Okay, here is your first one then. Get you back. Hi. Do I want to touch this? I think so. It's not too bad. Don't think. Oh my, what is that? No peeking! What is that? Oh, oh my goodness. What do you think it is? I don't know. Guess! Um, is it sardines? <laughs> it's not sardines. Okay, my turn again. Here we go. Here is the thing. I don't know if I want to. Put the hand in. Ew, what is that? Ew! <laughs> what did she give me? <laughs> what is it? Is it glue? No. no. Is it? It's not more slime. No. no. Is it toothpaste? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, second one for me. Okay, here's your second one. Okay. No Do I want to touch this? It's not too bad. Okay. Let's try. What, do you think um, what in the world is that? Oh, it's squishy. It's squishy? I don't want to know. Oh, this is my, this is my, um, rocky slime. <laughs> your rocky slime? Yeah, your kinetic rocks, isn't it? Okay, my turn again. Yes. Very much so. Do I want to put my hand in here? Um, you like it, but you don't want to touch it. What is that? Is that nail varnish? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, here is your third one. Are you ready? Yes, but I don't want to put my hand right. in. Don't look. Put your hand in. Oh, what is that? <laughs> what is it? I think it's cream. No, not cream. I don't know. Do you want to guess all my thing? <laughs> um, I still don't know what this is. Okay, take your hand up. Ew, my face! <laughs> you made me break my hand! <coughs> okay, last one for me. Yep? yep. Alright, here we go. Do you want to touch I don't know. You're, you're doing these and gross ones for me. It, it, you look, you like it, but you don't want to touch it. You never want to touch it. Oh, is that lipstick? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you ready for your last one? I'm going to need it. Um, oh, it's just one better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously too easy. Well, thank you very much for your help today. Did you have fun? Yes, but I did not like red paint. And I definitely did not like the toothpaste. I think that was definitely the greatest. But 
A good one. <laughs> <laughs> so remember what I said that this week and for the next few weeks we're going to be looking at some of the challenges that the disciples faced and we're going to look in the book of Acts to find out what they had to do as the church grew. So today we're going to look at Acts in a more general view, as an overview if you like, so we can understand as we get into it what it's really all about. So let's just remember where we can find the book of Acts. You can find it in the New Testament and it comes after the, the Gospels, after Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. So if those were the story about Jesus' human life on earth, then Acts is the story of what comes next. So we're going to try and do things a little bit differently today because you know how I like to change things up. And we're going to look at our memory verse now because this verse kind of sets out what Acts is all about. And the verse is Acts 1 verse 8. And Rebecca's going to read it for us. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But the Holy Spirit will come to you. Then you will receive power. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, in Samaria, and in every part of the world. Thanks, Rebecca. That was great. Now, you might have noticed that was a jam-packed verse. Lots of good things going on in there. But we're going to just look at three of the words that were in that verse to help us understand what the Acts is all about and what it means to us. So the first one that we're going to look at is this word, witnesses. Do you know what a witness is? Well, the author of Acts was a witness, and it says in this verse that we are going to be witnesses. So I guess we should probably make sure we know what it means. But let's go back to that author of Acts. Do we know who that is? Well, if we go to the first verse of chapter 1, it gives us a clue. It doesn't tell the name of the author, but it says who the, the book of Acts is being sent to. Who is it written to? And it's this man called Theophilus. Now that's a clue because there is another book in the Bible that is also written to a man called Theophilus. And let's see if we can track it down. I'll give you a hint. It is one of the Gospels. So Matthew, Mark, Luke or John. And you can find it in verse 4 of the first chapter of one of those Gospels. Why don't you pause the video now and see if you can track down which Gospel it is that has the same author. Well, did you figure it out? Well, don't worry if you didn't. I'll give you the answer. The author of Acts is also the author of Luke. It was, in fact, Luke who wrote the book of Acts and also the book of Luke. And he was a doctor and he was around the same time that the book of Acts was being written. But he wasn't one of the disciples. He didn't see Jesus with his own eyes. So how does that make him a witness? Well, Luke was almost like an investigator. He was determined to find out the truth of what happened so that he could make sure that he was telling others the truth as well. So he researched, he found people that had seen Jesus and had experienced what happened. He spoke to the disciples, he spoke to probably hundreds of people to make sure that what he wrote down was the truth. So that made him a witness. So the Gospels were the story of Jesus's life on earth. And like I said before, Acts is the continuation, the next part of the story. And it's a little bit like books that we can get today. Have you ever read a book that doesn't quite finish and there's another part, a sequel or a whole series of books? Well, one of the ones that we have in our house that we love is one that's called The Princess in Black. And this book is amazing. But it doesn't quite finish. There's like a teaser at the end. We want to know what happens next. So, of course, we bought the next one. But then, oh, there's another one. And there's actually three more that we've got as well. So if Luke was the first part, then Acts was the second part. 
But this verse doesn't just tell us that the Bible is going to be a witness. It says that we need to be witnesses. So what does that mean? Well, that's just what Bible study is, what praying is, what learning about God is. When we know the truth, we can tell the truth. And that gives us the courage to go out and witness, go and tell other people, share the good news with those people around us. So we. Okay, so for our game for you guys today is to see how good you guys would be at being an eyewitness. So it's spot the difference. So I'm going to show you two trays and there will be the same objects on both trays. And then I'm going to remove one of the objects and your job is to tell me what object was moved. All right, are you ready? Okay, so here are the two trays. They're perfectly the same. There is no difference between them. And now I'm going to take one thing away. What have I taken? Did you get it? It was the sock. Okay, here's the next thing. What have I taken away? The pencil. Okay, next round. What have I taken away? The hair bow. Okay, the next one. The rock. Well done if you got that one. Last one. What have I taken away? The chewing gum. Now the good news is that this verse doesn't say that we should just go and witness in our own strength. It says something really important. So the next word we're going to look at is the word power. What does the word power mean? Well the word power actually means a lot of different things so hopefully you come up with something like one of these. The dictionary says that power means the ability to do or act, the capability of doing or accomplishing something, the possession of control or command over others, or authority. There's a lot of big words. But when you have power, it means that you can do so many things. Now the word power pops up in Acts time after time after time. So let me just read a few verses and I want you to see what you can figure out about this power. Where is this power coming from? All right, so the first one is Acts chapter 3 verse 12 and it says this. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? All right, here's the next verse. Acts chapter 4, verse 33. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's grace was so powerfully at work at them. All right, next one. Chapter 6, verse 8. Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people. All right, and here's the last one about power. Chapter 9, verse 22. Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Messiah. So where does this power come from? Did you get it? Now I'm sure you guessed it. Now this power did not come from people. This power came from God. And it was God in the form of the Holy Spirit. And this is our next word that we're going to look at. A word that pops up through Acts over and over again. There were so many amazing things that happened in the book of Acts and it was all because of the power of God through the Holy Spirit that people had within them. There was an explosion of faith. People believed in so many different places. People were saved from their sins 
and others were courageous and brave to step out and share their faith with people wherever they went. Now at the beginning of this video I didn't just say that it was going to be all sunshine and rainbows for the apostles and the disciples. It was difficult at this time but the amazing thing is that the Holy Spirit gave these people amazing bravery and courage to do what God wanted them to do. So we're going to be looking at some of these stories of these men and women of faith and how they overcame the challenges that they faced with the power of God. So I hope you're excited to start learning about the book of Acts and you might see some similarities to what they went through to what we're going through today and even how they started their church. Churches started in homes just like we have to have church in our homes at the moment. So let's remember that we can be witnesses, but we can be witnesses with the power of the Holy Spirit within us. So our verse, one more time, is Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But the Holy Spirit will come to you. Then you will receive power. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, in Samaria, and in every part of the world. Well, thanks for joining me again this week. I hope you've had some fun and you've learned something new. And I hope you're excited to start learning about the book of Acts. Don't forget to do some of the activities linked in the description box below. And if you want to get in touch, the best way to do that is through Facebook or by sending me an email. And also, if you would like to get involved with our mm -hmm. weekly Zoom calls, one happens on a Wednesday afternoon and another on a Saturday afternoon. Just send me an email and I will pass you on the link. I will see you again next time. Bye.